What's up? What's up, my good people? <clears throat> so this is this is the moon here, allegedly. <laughs> uh, anything in this uh, dream time reality, uh, it it's word to the wise. Uh, <laughs> things are in flux it may seem to be a certain way but uh, it may also seem to be a verb as in life's motion everything's in motion especially the constructs the belief systems the BS is falling away and <laughs> what is being uh, observed by more and more is what is the 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 real the reality and because uh, most people aren't used to observing reality for how it is uh, we have things that are called the Mandela Effect. Uh, shifting realities, shifting timelines. And that's not to say necessarily that those things aren't valid in and of themselves. But there's, there's usually, when I say usually, I mean always, to what degree... of a deeper reality and realm a uh, a certain influence at play that once you become a little bit more privy to a little bit more aware of then you can start to see and feel the feeling comes before the sight. The feeling is the sight. You start to feel things for as they are. And then, w w once you've really done your work, done the inner work, discerned what it is to be, just to be, then... It's not, it's not really any surprise whenever you see things shift before your eyes because you understand the nature of reality, the nature of your beingness and maybe not completely but you understand it to a level where you become more comfortable I guess you could say with things not appearing as they once were <clears throat> so yeah let's see this video here is of the channel SUSO S-U-S-S-O I believe um, unless that's changed as well <laughs> but uh, this guy is mainly does videos on Mandela effects and the bar that he works in. Uh, he interviews people, and it's just it's just a very interesting thing to witness uh, other people's reactions, other people's experiences. So definitely recommend this channel. If you're at all interested in the Mandela effect or just reality in general and dissolving the boundaries and layers of what that may, that may mean to you. So this is a picture of the moon. This is very interesting here. And, and one of the things that he was mentioning is, and 
right he he said it right after I thought it was that this very much reminds me of like uh looking at clouds and you know uh, seeing what images come about you know, you know and so you can kind of see a kind of like a dragon or some kind of a demon face right here and then some kind of a weird cat <laughs> head popping out of it and some other stuff going on but it's just very interesting the moon has been very interesting this past I, I don't know how many years now amping up in degrees more and more the closer we get to that 2020 vision so yeah like usual oh it's interesting Ooh, hoo -hoo. <laughs> the moon has interesting qualities even when recorded even when <laughs> displayed on a device and recorded again still that light still has a certain quality about it so yeah we'll, we'll get in a little bit into Mandela effects um more so about the inspiration of why I'm creating this and uh, kind of uh, just happened spontaneously I guess you could say but really it was just kind of like a culmination of like inner feelings that, that were always there I mean I always kind of felt these things but then uh, all of a sudden like boom like it hit and, and that's not necessarily to say that Oh, that's, that means that it's the case. No, no. That just means that that inspiration hit for me and there was some, something to be gleaned and learned from that and not necessarily, necessarily dictated just, just from that, but from, from what, what bubbles up from that initial starting point. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, too big of a topic right now to, to really super dive into. So I'm just going to kind of... Uh, very much like throwing a pebble, you know, skipping the pebble across the pond. I'm, I'm just going to leapfrog and skip across certain points here but uh mandela what a coincidence that it's oftentimes pronounced mandala and what is a mandala if, if you look into it uh, it's the same geometric patterning of say cymatics say uh, circuitry even uh, circuit boards that's why mandala is you could call it the uh, physical representation of the energetics or vibrations of manifestation and yes you can get to a point and I've expressed this before I think I even have a video called Mandala Effect uh, where I just uh, we look at different mandalas through with this book that I have of mandalas and read from the passages and mandalas are, are a very interesting thing in that they are everywhere and in everything in uh, micro and macro because what they are is a 
like I said, a vibration in a a superimposition of multi layers of subtleties collapsed into the physical to where you can observe it on a certain bandwidth or frequency. You can get to a point where you uh, communicate in, in what I what I like to say uh, man, mandala language. You can get to certain uh, modes of awareness, if you want to call it meditation or just a focus, to where the uh, sensory input becomes a lot more mandala-like. So. There's no coincidence here with Mandela and Mandala, but there's also, as I like to say, yes, and there is more with everything. I don't, I don't like to split sides and split things as this or that. I just, I like to say yes, you are correct there and there and yes you are correct there but yes there is more as in both and more and everything so this Mandela effect is uh, very much tied into this quote-unquote flat earth effect where people go into that rabbit hole and then realize that no that's not the case either but because I went down this rabbit hole I was able to see more lies potentially potentially more truths as well And yes, I will say that with a lot of people, they, they are still dirty inside. So whenever they are trying to cons trying to understand what the Mandela and the Mandala is for themselves, they're doing so with a dirty lens or dirty projector. So... they're going to be more susceptible to get caught up in the hype game and lose focus on what the real mess message is what's really going on within and without So, I'll put it to you this way, because I don't want to go too, too deep into it without having uh, the correct story and context. So, we got to kind of have to be a little bit vague here. So let's start with the human creates its own reality because that's what it does. It is a reality creating machine. The mind is everything, but the mind is also within each individual. It's up to each individual to create the reality that it wants to, that it wants to, that it wants to live in, that it wants to. manifest
And for the average human in today's world, they do very little actual creating and more operating within the constructs already presented with them. And then they think, they are tricked into thinking that they are actually creating, but really they're just creating inside of a box. So it's a limited creation that's happening. They, this, is, this is, there's multi meanings here with uh, squaring the circle, because the circle is a uh, limitless uh, expansion. Uh, squaring that, you know, can represent uh, different things. It can represent a, a geometrical understanding and understanding of the nature and reality uh, within you and within all of life. Uh, it can also represent a squaring, a boxing of the limit, the limitlessness that you are. And then a square and a circle is also one of the main foundations of a mandala as well. Squaring the circle. So, assuming, you know, if you're not privy to understanding that you create your own reality, that you are immensely powerful, more so than you know, <sighs> ah, where to go? Uh, there, there are people that... Hmm, words, what words do I choose here? There are people that have been brought up, uh, raised into knowing the inner constructs of reality and how to manipulate. And like I've said in previous videos, it's the compound thought and compound imagery that is very much why things are the way they are right now. So, uh, this kind of spark of imagery and epiphany that happened with me was that the number, the amount of individuals creating the maya and the illusions are falling one by one and this is why a lot of us are seeing shifts in reality, shifts in the image, shifts in what we thought was real. And it starts on you know, a very subtle level and then it escalates to a level where potentially where it seems unbelievable or, or quote unquote magical, mystical. But yes, this is where it's happening, inside the mist, inside the light within the water, which is everywhere. The imagery is, is collapsing. The imagery of the propagated BS, the belief structures. And so what we are experiencing right now is this collapse and then it's it's a choice do you choose to
strengthen yourself? Do you choose to see the, these signs all around you, within you, as... an empowering thing? Do you utilize it as a stepping stone for empowerment, for further gnosis to engage this? Or do you get caught up in it? Does it become the next entertainment and entrainment for you, which is what it's become? That's why it's been called the Mandela effect and why so many people are getting caught up in the rat race of it and failing to realize the foundations of the mandalas where it begins the origins the vibrations And this isn't by any means easy shit to finally come to realize. Because of the entrainment and the indoctrination systems. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes inner work. To start to, to, start to be able to glimpse what's really going on here within more so than without because the more inner sh fucking work you do the outer shit is just going to fall into place it's going to make more sense because it's going to match up with your inner experiences and the most important thing you are going to start to connect the two you're going to start connecting the dots and realizing dissolving Boundaries, dissolving the boundary between inner and outer, realizing the connection between the two. The deeper you go within, the more you're going to be able to see clearly without. That's how this shit works, people. So yes, uh, not going in super deep here. But essentially, the uh, the amount of people that were dedicated to the imagery, that is falling away. So as their collective image is crumbling, so too is the image of what we thought was real. What we were told was real. So things are coming to light that, that should have been obvious from the get-go, but was not because of the power of the image. The power of a collective image. A certain group that were trained to be very powerful in imagery and to create a certain kind of imagery to where it would be very easy to trick the masses. And the more people that you fool, the more people are going to go along with it. So more and more of these people are switching sides or falling away. Deciding that they don't want to do this anymore, and so uh, the the mass confusion of the mass illusion is falling. But the illusion, the the confusion from the illusion, is still prevalent, and we are right now we are seeing the people that will not let go of that illusion, even when even as it's falling beneath their feet. They, they will not fucking let go of it. So we're seeing a lot of things like... Uh, obvious things. Because, because... And I'm speaking to the people that... Are willing to do their... Uh, 
their inner work and they're they're able to distinguish and discern what is real for them. The, the vast majority of the population right now, they're not able to think for themselves. So we're having a, a, a huge battle of people that are moving towards the, the people that have already been engaging in, in this kind of a reality, the mandala reality, mandala language. And then we're having a another side of people that that are holding on to fear and holding on to pain and projecting that because it's too scary for them to let go of the illusions that they've been uh, brought up in. And so they they find a group of like-minded people that also uh, hold on to the fear and the pain and the illusion. This is happening on many levels, micro and macro. But essentially, this is what the Mandela Effect is. This is kind of the epiphany. This is my, uh, uh, offering, I guess you could say, that, uh, through this epiphany that I had, which, which was always kind of there, but it just finally hit, like, strongly here, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's the case. I'm just offer offering up food for thought. that as the ones that were projecting the imagery of separateness, separation of the within and without, as within, so without, as above, so below, as below, so above, As these people drop like flies one by one, so too does that imagery drop. So more and more of us are able to uh, really tap into this frequency that is no longer blocked as much. But at the same time, it is attempting to be uh, cold, C-U-L-L-E-D, into uh, a place where it can be vanquished, but... Uh, this is unlike any other time of our previous cycles. Uh, okay, I should I should say that our previous cycles before the original cycle, because the original cycle we done did it all, and and, and we went to a place where this is getting into you know a little bit too deep. I need to preface this a little bit more. But, I'll just go ahead and say, uh, the original humans, uh, we already didn't, done, did everything that we, we, uh, wanted to, and we, we fucked it up. I mean, that's just how it is. We fucked it up. Uh, we engaged with too much of one aspect of an inner of the all that is we engage one aspect of that too much over all the other aspects which is you can say you can liken this to egotism as in we thought ourselves better than all the rest and so this is why we keep repeating this cycle that we're on here of uh, rise and fall, rise and fall, <sighs> slave and master, and 
Yeah, it's just, I don't want to go too deep into it right now, because uh, it's not going to make any sense if I do, so. I need to preface it, preface it with the right imagery, the right uh, intonations and vibrations and reverberations. So for me, as I'm witnessing more and more of the mandala language and the mandala effect, it is just a further uh, dissolving of the layers and the boundaries of what we've been taught compared to what is actually real and observable and you're able to feel. Okay, let's go into this real quick. It's just gonna be uh, images of the moon. Uh, okay, yeah, that he's taken with uh, his, uh, what is it, P90, P90X, whatever the fuck. I also wanted to mention that this guy, he zoomed in on a uh, glare off of, I think it was a, off of a bumper or something of an automobile. And that glare looked exactly identical to whenever people zoom in with the P90X to stars. There is no difference. So, make of that what you will. To me, that's obviously a representation a representation of the camera being used. That it gets to a certain point of focus to where it only can observe the more liquidy nature of the lights within the liquid, the mem and ori. So, just because we see all these P90X, or P P90, I don't think, I think the X was, P900, ah, I got the workout mixed up, the P900 camera, the, uh, whenever people view, like, zoom in super close to stars and whatnot, and they see this, uh, liquidy pattern of light and geometry, uh, yes, there is something to this, uh, cymatics and geometry, but whenever I saw that, that, you know, the same image was, the same imagery and the effects was, there with uh, something zoomed in uh, on ground level not all that far away just it, it raises a lot of uh, inquiries I was looking at some clouds and I noticed some faces and were what could be absolutely be faces. And what I saw around here is dragons more than anything. Here. Never so much. And also, just so you know, whenever you look at clouds, it's whenever you look outside of yourself, it's a reflection of your inner state. So, especially with clouds, especially whenever you're you are first really starting to dive into looking, observing nature, observing clouds, uh, not. Not realizing yet that you you can shape the clouds into whatever you will it to be. 
So before that happens, you're going to observe the faces and the shapes of the clouds that are reflected within you. You are going to see yourself, essentially, within and without. Now, I'm just thinking of how I'm seeing all these faces in the moon, and uh, some of them are... See, to me, looking through the camera, I'm thinking, wow, that is really defined. You can really see that. And I'm not even mean this one here, and I'm right in the middle. I'm not even mean that. When I was over here, there was something that... It looked, and I can't find it. Oh, there it is, right there. I would say right in the middle, right there. He got a long head. His head is from the top to the bottom, but his eyes are right in the middle. And through the camera right now, it looks, you know, interesting. And I had a cloud that looked like it was a mask in the sky in my last video. I filmed it, and I said something like, wow, look at the definition on this, and and I'm looking at it, and I'm going, wow, I can't even see the face. I couldn't even see what was the mask. I've been hearing this statement a lot. Within the last three days, I must have heard it six or seven times. My brother from another mother. Seven times in the last three days. I've heard it seven times my whole life, okay? And most of that was back in the 80s and the 90s. That's when I heard that. <laughs> now I've heard it no less than seven times in the last three days. What's today? Tuesday? Saturday. So maybe four days. So what? Four days. In four days, I've heard my brother from another mother. So at least seven times. But I haven't heard it anywhere in between the 90s and now. 20 years, really? Strange. That's all. It's just strange. Coincidence, I'm sure. Coincidence, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, once again, uh, with the Mandela effect, uh, it's also aiding in people's, uh, forgetfulness and that they're able to just label it a Mandela effect instead of really thinking, hmm. Really, how was it, for sure? Uh, there, there's a couple things that I, I pick up on whenever people are, say uh, certain terminologies, such as, oh, this is a 100 percenter. Oh, for sure. For a fact. I knew this for a fact. That, to me, uh, says the opposite of that. <laughs> So, uh, watch out for these cues with people. And that's not to say that you should throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, from this guy, Suso, that I really dig. He goes into modes where he's very deep and very intuitive. He goes into modes also where he's uh, the opposite of that. And, uh, very, I don't want to say emotional as much as triggered. So yeah, this guy, um, uh, goes back and forth on the rig. And it's, uh, just very interesting to learn from. What else can we do, right? We, we we have to learn from everything that we're presented with, so otherwise we're just going to get caught up in it. So we, you have to learn from it, even if you don't quite understand what you're seeing or witnessing. Listen, listen, learn to listen, listen within, understand. That's how you understand. You learn to listen. Then you engage in experience gnosis, and then you get used to this engagement. But also, uh, one of the things uh, that I thought was funny, what he just said was, uh, brother from another mother, and I almost, I almost commented and wrote this, and, and uh, my last... 
uh, live stream I just did, which was just a clusterfuck of connection issues. But I keep uh, getting the comments that I am, that I look like uh, Zen Atman's brother. <laughs> And I almost commented, yes, brother from another mother, but, but I did not. So it's just uh, very funny and synchronistic to have that happen and come about. And I also feel this with a lot of you I connect with, uh, Skyhopper, for sure. Some deep stuff going on there. Uh, just, just with everyone, just, with, just with all of you I connect with. Uh, activation codes is, is, a, is a, is one that it's. Uh, it's interesting listening to this guy talk because it's like, I'm listening to myself, and it's, it's a, uh, it's a very strange thing, and also. I wanted to mention, uh, just recently, I don't know if any of you all have had uh, similar things happening, but uh, the doppelganger effect, or the thing where people think they saw you in other locations, or just just hearing about, oh, hey, I just had someone say that they saw you uh, in this location, but I... I told them there's no way that that could have been you because you were you were here, and I've just been having a lot of that happen lately, like like more so than in any other time that I can remember, because I've had this happen throughout my life, but not so frequently from so many angles and so so many people. So it's uh. I don't know, and whenever I hear that, I'm just like, hell yeah! <laughs> There's a lot of me going around. That's 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 right. <laughs> I dig it. So yeah, so that's that's about it for now. Check out Suso's channel. Check out Zen Man. Check out Mind Gen Abaddon. Check out Activation Codes. Check out uh, Skyhopper, check out Danny Skylark, ch check out Junipers. All y'all are just fucking, uh, man, it's such a privilege to be able to connect with people like you. So thank you for being who you are. Shout out to y'all. <laughs> oh, oh my god. To to y'all. There we go. Keep on going within, and it will. The answers from without will seep in eventually, slowly but surely. They will. <laughs>